welcome to Creatively Rich. I'm your host, Ann Tipton, here today with three of my favorite humans in the whole world. We have Rebecca Liston, Stella Orange, and Sarah Dew. Um, these ladies are my friends and mentors, and um, quite frankly, just people who have helped me birth the business that I have today. Um, I could not be where I am without them, and I am so super grateful to have them in my world. We are going to do things a little differently than we normally do today. Um, Obviously, we have all three ladies on uh, to tell a little bit about how they are doing business on their own terms. They've developed a different type of way to do money that works to allow all of them to do their absolute best work that they can do in the world and share not only the fruits of their labor, but also the expenses that that occur as a result of, of that. So um, when they were kind of coming up with this way of doing business. Rebecca told a wonderful story about a lawnmower. So Rebecca, can you share that story with us? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. And, and But first of all, thank you for having us today. This is really great and such a, a delight to be with you. So thank you for that. I think when we were first coming up with the idea of combining our businesses, because we had worked together and each had our own busy businesses separately, right, but had worked together and shared clients, when we were talking about how we wanted to set this business up together, we had lots of ideas, right? And one of the things that I had always or has been on, on my mind is that I live in a condo and it's always bothered me that everyone within the condo thinks that they, they all need the whippersnipper and we all need a shovel and we all need, uh, you know, what you guys don't know what a whippersnipper is? Weed whacker. <laughs> Wait, wait. I'm so, I, I tried to keep it in. I did. <laughs> what the hell is a whippersnipper? Is that actually a thing or did you make it up? No, I didn't make it up. I would not mess around about garden tools. Is that a brand name? Please tell me it is. I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's one of those Canadian things. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I just I, added you as Canadian. But I, I would have my sofa or whatever you people call it. <laughs> it's a weed whacker. It whacks the weeds. Thank right you. Whacker. We call it a whippersnipper, y'all call it a weed whacker, but the point is the same, which is why does everybody need one? Like why can't, you know, we're not all using it at the same time. Can we just time. share the damn thing? Can we just share the damn thing, right? So it's kind of bothered me because we actually have very limited storage space in our condo. So I'm like, why is everybody trying to shove all the same equipment in their garage? And then we all complain that we don't have enough room. So I feel like when you're living in community with people, I mean, <laughs> how many people, like weed whackers do you really need? Can I borrow your whippersnipper? I think it's really <laughs> Can I borrow your whippersnipper and then you can use my lawn? Like while I whippersnip, you can mow your lawn and we could just like swap around. And then the other guy's got the little push cart for the, you know, the fertilizer spreader or whatever, right? But the point is, <laughs> I think somehow we have ourselves in this concept that we all need to own all of all things. And I said to Sarah and Sally, I said, I, I feel like business could be the same way. Like, why do we each have to have our own Zoom account? Why do we each have to have our own Acuity account? If you can set up an online scheduler to serve multiple users, why are we all insisting on paying that same amount of money to, individually to have one? And I don't mean just the three of us. I mean, just as a whole, why are people doing that? So there's some concept around, like, I've got to have all my own stuff. And it's not just for business owners. It's a it's a humanity issue. It's a third, third, you know, it's not third world problem. It's a first world issue, right? Like where we're just like, Oh, I got to have my own coffee maker. I got to have my own kettle. I got to have my own stuff. But what about if we looked at the resources we have and we share them? So that was one of our like founding principles for the development of the company really was let's share uh, not only our resources, like our zoom account and our acuity account and that sort of thing. But we also share now in our company, we brought our team in as well. So team members that were working with me individually and team members that working with Stella individually now all work in collaboration with one another to create one larger team to serve us. So, so we just looked at everything and kind of said, well, why don't we just like share what we have already um, and get rid of what we don't need? Because one of the things that I think people don't always think about in business is that it's not necessarily like people just focus so much on what you earn and nobody talks about what you're spending and it makes me batty. Because really the key is what, what do you got left at the end? If you got nothing, if you're making like all, a lot of times in the, what I call affectionately, the coachy coachy world, everyone's talking about earning six figures. And of course, if you notice that's not enough in the advertising anymore, now we've gone to multiple six or seven now, because apparently earning six is just not enough. 
but no one's talking about what they spent to get there. And it's very misleading, extremely misleading, because no one's saying, hey, I earned, they're all talking about I earned $100,000, but they didn't actually tell you that they spent $150,000 to do it. And that's the actual truth. And so I think people need to focus more on uh, what they're spending and look at how we can reduce and share costs to, ev to everyone's benefit. Right. So that therefore what we actually take home at the end of the day is higher. So that's how we that's one of the ways that we started our our money process and how we look at it. And it's made quite an evolution from there, from going from let's share a Zoom account to let's share everything. So, Stella, can you talk a little bit about how that's worked out for you? Sure. And <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. No, no, I know what you're up to. I know the game you're playing and I'm not going to fall into your evil plans. So, <laughs> um, so probably, so we did a lot of coalescing, uh, like we started the, our work together last summer and maybe, I don't know, I want to say five, six, seven months in, Sarah and Rebecca, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not great with time. Maybe it was more than that, but basically we had this whole complex system of, like tracking who brought the business in. So like I'm a copywriter, like I write websites with Rebecca, we write talks for people. And so if it was one of my contacts or someone that came from my mailing list, I would get, I used the old way was I get paid a certain amount. If Sarah brought in someone that ended up becoming our client in common, then we'd give her a little bump and then Rebecca and I would make less. And this made sense at the time because I know we were, you know, it's, it's, it's a mindset shift. Like, and for me, it was even these two women that I trust to like the depths of my being, like in business, I thought like my paradigm was, I got to make sure that I get mine because everyone else is out to screw me. Even with these two who I had known and done business with, and, you know, we'd exchange clients and worked together informally for years. Like that was still kind of my come from, but then over time that just got to be a pain in the tuckus. And we were driving our bookkeeper batty to use a Canadian term. She accused us of being whippersnippers because a lot of us, because it was all of this tracking and this minutia. And I think Sarah, I think it was you, Sarah's, Sarah is the one in the group who can like sees how the pieces fit together. And finally she was like, you know, this might sound nuts, but what if we stopped tracking who brought in the business and who was actually doing the work and we just divided up the pot between the three of us. And I remember, and Re Rebecca just went, and I don't know if you got teary or I've made up the memory that you got teary, Rebecca, but there was emotion in that moment because I think we were sitting in your living room, Sarah. And if that's true, then that was April when we did our BeaverCon event. And that would have been like maybe eight or nine months into the whole kitten caboodle. Um, and that's when we like tried on the idea of what if we really took seriously the idea that we were building our financial and like security, like our houses together in common with one another. And really, I don't want to say tethering, but like getting in the same teacup together in terms of when the business is doing well, we're all doing well. And it's not about paying attention to the details or the minutia of, oh, Stella wrote this many things and Sarah counseled this many clients and, and Rebecca counseled this many clients but saying we're all in this together. And that, like, it, I mean, that was pretty quick. I feel like you said that, Sarah, we were sitting on the floor of your living room. Rebecca got emotional and she was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for saying that, I'm in. And I'm always a little bit slower to the party. Like, then these, they see the vision really fast and then they do this thing where they talk about it and I just sit there and I'm like, okay, how am I feeling about this? And I was like, this sounds nuts to me. And from a rational standpoint, you know, like all of my, like all of the men in my family who have done business and been, have MBAs and advanced degrees and have run companies and sold companies, all of their voices in my head. And they're like, what are you freaking nuts, girly? And I was like, yes, I'm nuts. Let's do it. And so it, it wasn't maybe the most rational decision, but I think from an emotional standpoint, like it has unlocked another level of our financial performance 
in the business. And it's not, I mean, it's not like I went in lightheartedly. Like I thought about it and I was like, yeah, why, why the hell wouldn't we do this? Like you got to throw down for the ideas you believe in. And these are the two women that I want to get in a, tea, a teacup with, with our shared whippersnipper. So we do that. And then on a practical level, we do um, like, so we have the revenue coming in that month. And then we have like a certain percentage that we set aside for our profit account. Um, we follow uh, Michael Michalowicz's profit first model. We use some of his ideas. We think it's really smart. And then we have another account that we call our break glass account, which is our break glass in case of account. And this would be things like we aspire to have, you know, medical leave and maternity leave. And as an American, I think I can't help myself. I'm not getting donuts from with biting my tongue. We should have health care in this country <laughs> and we should have parents that get to take off time to be with a sick kid in the hospital. And that actually happened to Sarah, not that far in. And I think, tell me if I'm wrong, Sarah, but like you were kind of worried about, oh no, I just started this new company with two other women and I actually need to be with my son in the hospital. And Rebecca and I are like, go. That's what needs to happen. And so we are creating our own mini culture between two Americans and a Canadian where this will come into being because we've decided it's important. It's how it's supposed to be. So we do the profit account. We do the break glass account. And then we do, what am I forgetting? Oh, expenses. We take expenses. We hold them in common. We take a little bit off the top, not a little, we take a chunk off the top to pay our expenses. And then we divvy the rest up into three and we no longer base it on who's doing the work or who brought in the business. That's amazing. So it's just a straight percentage then after, after expenses and savings, it's a straight percentage. So everybody's getting the same amount every month. Yep. yep. No, not the same, same amount from one another. So we each get the same payment. So okay. Basically whatever's left after we take off break glass, profit expenses, whatever's remaining, we split it. That's it. That's the rocket science there. <laughs> well, you know what? I like easy math. I'm so easy math. Huge fan. Huge yeah. fan. The book five, five, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bookkeeper, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't even imagine that nightmare of like. Oh, she likes us so much more now than she yeah, did. She did not basketball. like us before. She was very, I felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, where did this come from? I mean, it kind of sounds like you were, you were the catalyst for it. Did, have you ever seen or heard or experienced <sighs> it, anything oh. like this? Uh, where did it come from? No, we were sitting there and talking and we've done over it a, a bunch of times and, you know, we were, I think the conversation, we were like, how are we going to figure out who gets paid what for what? And I was like, all right, well, how do we get into this weird little conversation? And we've had it so many times and it just felt like we weren't getting anywhere ever with it. And it was never, I don't know, it wasn't, what's the word clean or something. And so what, one of the things that I do is I'm like, okay, let's back up. Let's look at this from like no emotion. Like let's look at this. And I was like, well, hell, we're all working towards a common goal. We all want our clients to do well. We all want these, we have these shared values. And if that's the case, I trust them inherently. So I know when Rebecca's working, she wants success for me. She wants success for, actually what it was is it changed it from being us as individuals and it created us as a whole unit. That's right. And that's what needed to happen. What yep. needed to happen is we needed to start looking at this business as its own thing, not Stella's part of the business, Sarah's part of the business, Rebecca's part of the business, That's right. by changing the model and looking at it as a, a whole unit, it changes the emphasis and it allows us to serve our clients in such a higher level to take care of one another in a much more held way. So we're, it's, it's removing the individual from it really. Um, which for a lot of us is not what we did. Like we were all person brands, like we were all ourselves. So it's a big, it's a big shift. Yeah. It mm -hmm. also, I think, allows it for us to each do, like, to know that I, in this particular hour of the day, from three to four, I might be serving a client. But as I'm serving a client and money is coming in, Sarah might be doing a sales call in that same hour, right? And also in the same hour, Stella's writing maybe our marketing copy for our own website. Yeah. All three of those hours, like, who's to say which of those is worth more the hour spent serving the client, the hour spent working on our marketing, the hour spent on a sales call, which may or may not even go anywhere. They're all valuable. Right. And so I think that's a large part of it for me. It was recognizing that every hour put in 
is has value whether you're hosting a virtual tea party or you're working with the marketing team or you're supporting the, the bookkeeper, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, it's all of equal value. Um, so that, that really made uh, a lot of sense for me. And I think that also feels really good where then everyone knows that they're really working um, at the same level of value, no matter what it is they're doing for the company. That meant a lot to me. Yeah. And I will say there was like an order. It wasn't like we were like, oh yeah, this is a great idea. Let's do that. There was, we had conversation around, okay, well, if we're going to do that, that means we all have to equally be on board with this and growing it to what we all have to be in agreement to where, where we want this to go and that we are willing to do what it takes to get it there. So it, this wouldn't have worked if there was somebody who was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And I'm only going to be able to be available to do work a very small amount of time. Like there had to be equality in effort and we had to come to that agreement and understanding or else it wouldn't work. Well, I think that there's certainly some balance there because one of the things that I admire most about all three of you is you really have this beautiful, realistic picture of doing life and business at the same time, right? You all value your free time, your vacations, your bike trips, your whatever. Um, and so those things are all really important. So to be able to, and children, lots of, you know, all the time and energy that children take. So to be able to, to prioritize your time and know that things are getting done, and maybe you are tending to a sick kid in the hospital, but you know, somebody's having that sales call. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it just it, it allows everybody to be more and better. And I think that there's I mean, the three of you together are like a superpower. Right. You with your powers combined um, to, to <laughs> reflect Captain Flynn. Um, but I, I think that that's that's one of the brilliant things that that this model allows is to to really stay in your lane and do the things that you're best at and um, and not have to worry about writing the website copy if that's not what you're good at. Thank you. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think sometimes that Sarah joined this business just so she didn't have to write a newsletter every month. <laughs> she figured oh it out. Can I join too? <laughs> she did. That's it. No, that was like it was like a hard no from her. When we were figuring out our marketing plan at the end of last year, Sarah's like, you know what? I really we were like, what do you want to do? What do you not want to do? And Rebecca and I are like, we love to write, right? Let's keep writing a newsletter. And Sarah's like, you know what? I'd really like to not. And we were like, no rules! You <laughs> Well, she's yeah. already in a magazine. It's not like she. Yeah, yeah, no, and she publishes a magazine, so she's. And I don't book. write any of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know what Sarah got out of Stella. What did you? What did you get out of that you hated doing? Oh gosh, you're gonna make me out myself. <laughs> running, running a business. <laughs> I like being fabulous and talking to people and helping them find their stories. And I will out myself here and say, I volunteered to be our interim CFO when we first got together. Cause I was like, Oh, I believe in doing things you're not good at to get better at them. And I didn't, I did my best as the Japanese say, do your best. Gambate. I did my best and it was not good. And so we spent a lot of time at the end of last year cleaning up, like, because it is not my wheelhouse. And we, we have this idea of knowing your lane and doing what you're good at. And we're all learning together. And so now I'm pleased. I am, it's beyond pleased. I am deeply blissed out to report that now Rebecca is stepped in to her rightful place as our CFO. I don't have to do anything. I don't even like it. We did Sarah drew an organiza organizational chart. I don't even hold like, I don't hold a position of leadership in my own company. <laughs> Rebecca is our CFO. Sarah is our, our COO. And I report to Sarah on our organizational chart for marketing. And I cannot tell you, like I had to go through a process and I was like, wait a second, am I getting conned right now? And then I realized it was a dream come true. I was like, no, like Sarah and I have worked together for years and I've tried to like, actually when I worked by myself, hire her into my company as my COO. And she was like, oh, hells no. She knew, she knew what she, she you knew what you were getting. So I'm, I'm really- I couldn't do it alone, I needed Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so like, they're both, like I'm a, I'm a certain kind of business mind, but they hold, the stuff that like systems working methodically, like 
I feel like I'm, yeah, getting away with something because I don't have to do it. And for the record, do your art. You yeah. Do uh, your art. And for the record, she still sits in the executive tree. She's yeah. just part of the CEO. The CEO role is oh. made up of the three of us. So she's not out of it. We might have to revisit that because that was not my understanding. Apparently, we have a three seat in the CEO capacity. Yes. Oh, is that, is that why I show up at Monday Morning Business? Yes. Okay. yes. So I'm part of the visionary cohort. Okay, good. Th thanks, Sarah. Appreciate you. Maybe, maybe she liked the version in her head better. Who knows? <laughs> I was like, do we need to update that? You're still coming to those damn meetings. <laughs> I'm going to quit tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I, I like, I'm being, I'm being silly, but in all seriousness, like just the sense of relief. And as, as I talk to my friends and colleagues about that, this new venture that we're doing, um, they're like, it must be great to not have it all on your own shoulders. And it is. And I think at any like moment to moment, like whether it's working through something like, you know, a client interaction where you have an emotional response or like we do in that CEO function that Sarah's talking about that the three of us hold in common betwixt us, we're visioning what we want to do for the future. And that's so fun and so powerful and potent to do in conversation and collaboration with other people. Because one of, another one of the tenets we have is that we can go farther when we do it together. And so I don't have to be good at any, everything anymore. When you work by yourself, you've got to be good at a bunch of different stuff. And I wasn't. Like, and I, I ran a big business, you know, and it was great. And then I found out that I actually am doing better. My business is healthier now working with these two than it was working for, by myself because my expenses have gone down two thirds. No one talked about that. Yeah. My, I had a CFO, I had a bookkeeper, I had a CPA, none of them, none of them came to me and say, you know, Stella, I've looked at your books and actually I think you've got a problem. None of them said that to me. It was my role as the head of my company to realize that and I did not like, shame on me, but also, oops. And, hey, these two showed up. I'm out of jail. Like, I'm going to be okay and financially solvent in 10 years. Hello. <laughs> so that's amazing. And, I mean, you can't blame a CPA because, I mean, you guys are making this up as you go, right? So this is totally. And it's not their job, you know? Oh, but, yeah. And you and I have had this conversation, Ann. So, yes. Yeah. So, Rebecca Liston, what did you get out of doing that you were doing before that you don't have to now? It's probably mostly just like what Stella said about feeling like you're holding all the balls, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just nice for me. And, and, and I resisted, like I argued and fought and stamped my feet about not being invited to the marketing meeting to the point where a couple of times I even just showed up just to say, this is the meeting I'm not fucking invited to. <laughs> and, and, you know, she asked us I was not angry. to invite her because she was overworked. I'm like, don't invite me. I don't actually want to do it on her. She said, I don't want to do this. <laughs> So I, wa I knew I needed to give it up. And yet I was so stamping my foot like a toddler that a couple of times I just showed up and go, oh, how's the meeting going that I'm not invited to? And I was all snarky and bitchy about it. You know, and then I went on my merry way. It took, it took a couple months. And then she would text us. I know you're meeting right now for marketing. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm not showing up. up. I'm choosing not to show up. Just so uh, you know, I'm actively choosing not to be there. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh. But but it was hard. That's my thing. I, I, I don't, and I don't just do it for my, I didn't just do it for my own company, but I've been doing it for other companies for years. So it was really hard to let that go, but it did free. It's just sort of, again, it's freed space, right? Like, so, so it didn't feel like something. So in my case, it wasn't necessarily that I wanted to give that thing up, right? Like I wasn't dying to get rid of doing the numbers or whatever. I didn't actually want to give it up at all. But in the process of not holding it all, I like I just can't believe the relief of that. Like it's it's kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little weird. Like they give me a marketing report on our Monday meetings, and I'm just like dum to dum to dum, and I'm listening and I'm paying attention, but but I don't have to pay attention like I used to. Like I don't have to say how many times are we posting on Facebook this week or whatever. I don't even know. Maybe we don't even post on Facebook. I wouldn't really know. But <laughs> but it's kind of joyous not to be like having to fix every part of the car, right? Like I can just, I just run my own part of the car, right? And they're, they're running theirs and 
we all know eventually that it, you know, it all kind of feeds it, it together and it, it's kind of nice. So, yeah, so it wasn't something that I was happy to get rid of in the beginning, but glad that I'm not doing it now because there's just too much else to do. I'm sorry. So it's nice freedom from that. So any advice for somebody who sees what you're doing and thinks, wow, that's awesome. What what advice would you, yeah, Rebecca. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. Gonna say. Good. That's what I'm going to say. Um, this is not something you do until you've got your own shit handled. Like, because you think being in business on your own will push your growth edge and your stuff. Try collaborating with, you know, two other people and making decisions about how you're going to spend money and how you're going to handle disagreements and all of this stuff. This is growing edge stuff. And I'm not trying to sound like it's not about it. I'm just saying like, it's important. It was important to the three of us that we were not using this collaboration to rescue our businesses mm -hmm. that we actually came into the collaboration. I had my highest gross and my highest net income ever in 16 years, the year we decided to do this. So it is not a thing that you do when you're like, oh my God, I'm running out of money. What do I do? Oh, quick, I'll collaborate. Like that's that, you know, you can't save somebody by throwing, you know, when you're drowning beside them, you don't grab onto the other drowning person, right? So you've got to really make sure that you are solid and strong in your own right. And then you can consider it. And so that would be my first thing because it's, it is, it is an entity beyond itself, your business is anyway, but then you're multiplying it out. Right. So I would say that that would be my, my biggest piece of advice. Stella, Sarah. I think from the outside, it would be tempting to see it and be like, Oh my God, that's the answer. Like, Oh my God, that would save all of my problems. And I would say, go into it with the idea of what you can create together. And exactly what Rebecca said, not in a fix. This is not a fix for anything. This is a go into it in a creative space of what can we create together that would be exciting, that would be amazing, that we're all strong, whoever you're thinking about, or you're, you're all strong, everything's good. How can, how can you create something that's even more or better or expansive? That's why you do it. Not to fix anything. I got nothing. This is it. Well, one, one of the phrases I associate with you still, I think you were the first person I ever heard say it, although I'm sure that it's not original, but you, I, I, I associate the phrase all boats rise with you. Like that's one of those things that like, what can we do to make everybody better? And maybe not, um, you know, jumping into to bed with people in this way, but even if you just take that concept of, hey, you know what, I really only use Zoom on Tuesday and Friday my buddy, you know, they might only need it on Wednesdays, you know, so even, even Absolutely. Just parts there are of little ways that you could do it and keep it clean. Right. So let's say you did decide to share a zoom account with someone, right? One person takes the responsibility of paying zoom and then you set up an automatic invoice to the other person who's sharing it so that their credit card is being charged automatically every month and no one has to talk about it. Right. Keep it, make it really clean. Right. And then meet every six months to make sure that it's still working. So start, start that way. Right. It's a great idea. Right. And, um, you know, maybe you've got a really great assistant that's looking for some extra hours, then you know, share that assistant with other people. I mean, I had been doing that for years, right. And it's really valuable for everyone because that, that assistant already has all the skills that your colleague might need. Right. So look at, look at ways to do that too. Don't hoard your people, right? Don't hoard your people. Don't hoard your resources. Um, so I think there are small ways to, to start it for sure, but just really keep it clean. Like none of this, I'll flip you to Tim. Oh, you know, I was going to say Tim Hortons. That's another Canadian reference. I'll give you some Starbucks cards. You pay the zoom account. No, no, no. Everybody pays for the freaking zoom account. You put on the invoice. This was the payment for the share of the zoom account. You write it off properly. Like, drives me bonkers when people don't want to, right, track their expenses appropriately, right? This is why I'm the CFO. Um, like, I want to see it all still there, right? Don't be just like, well, I'll flip you, a, you know, an extra fiver when we go out bowling. No. That's how I do CFO, just so you know. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm not offended, but, uh, like, that's – know your lane. Mm -hmm. Know your lane, right? And for the record, I, w I just want to say, like – the sharing the lot door thing is something that I think all business owners can take advantage of. Like, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Do that. Share your stuff. 
please save on expenses for the love of all that is holy in this world. Don't waste your money. I'll preach about that for days if you get me on it. <laughs> yeah, that's not what this is. Like right. this, what we're doing is, is one part. Yeah. That's just one part of it. Correct. So like, let's just, just for the. You want to tidy that up. Yeah. Speak clearly. Yeah. 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 That's all. That's all. Carry on. Yes. Yeah. They're sharing expenses, sharing, like sharing the lawnmower. And then there's also yeah. sharing your income and your whole business strategy. <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that, that's, that's a different thing over here. But if you wanted, if you like the concepts of what we're talking about, one small way to do it would be to start by sharing a account or an assistant or that kind of thing. Like just to have that experience of not, you know, doing all of that by yourself. Right. And maybe that could crescendo into to something later. I think it's right. always good to test. Or maybe not. Or and not. That would be cool <laughs> too. Yeah. Right? It could just be that with this person, you forever share the Zoom account. And that's the only relationship you ever have. You've just won. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it really yeah. is an, an all boats rise situation. So Because we actually have, so we have our company together, but we all actually have separate companies still as well. And I know a lot of the times we'll be, you know, I'll be working in uh, one of my other companies and think, hey, we need something. Orange Listen and Do has it. Does it actually make sense for us to share their lawnmower? And so there are little bits of our other businesses that actually share resources, but they are separate, if that makes sense. So we're always thinking about like, how can we, how can we share the resources that we already have? And, you know, there is exchange of money from one business to the other so that it's equitable. Um, so there's tons of ways to do it. Lord knows some of these accounts, like you can have endless amounts of users on it. Mm -hmm. You like take advantage of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, ladies, thank you so much for giving us a little insight into this new world that you're, you're pioneering and, and what's possible and giving us all a little inspiration to, to think about our business in a different way. I so appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.